what it is that I'm into. Right. First of all, I didn't get into poker by playing poker. I got into poker by programming. Uh, I went, the first computer I got, the first program I ever did, seriously, was a program, five card draw, jacks of battle, and got completely fascinated with the bluffing algorithm. And at the point in my career in law, I was realizing as I was doing it, this is the way law works. I was, I was recognizing poker as like a way of thinking. It's a very fundamental arrangement of basics of risk and opponent. All right, so that was that was one very big one. Then, as I went forward in law school, I I had the feeling that poker was just the right game to teach to women law students. There was a problem with women. I don't know everywhere, but at Harvard, even though we got our numbers up, all of that, they still didn't top out on the law review. They still weren't topping out in the class, and you just felt that it had something to do with shying away from the aggressiveness that's inherent in being a lawyer. It's a very aggressive kind of environment. And so the idea of teaching poker as a way of learning that you're a player in the game, you just get an equal stake and get used to that feeling of being able to use your power of the all-in move. That's what we taught last night, is what's the feeling of going all-in? What's the feeling of getting somebody coming all-in against you? It's like, that's the key. All right, so you start building up on these things that have to do with how you relate to your opponent. And uh, that's where the game is, and that's that's where the opportunity to surround it with discussion. It's not about how you should have played this hand. Exactly. Um, I was very excited when we did the Lady Gaga event here, which is all about kids getting bullied all uh, in, in one fashion or, uh, or another. How do you learn to deal with a bully? Well, bullying is a strategy in poker, and you learn the strategies of not only bullying, but of dealing with the bully, and the opportunity to have a game with mixed age groups playing poker, where you talk about the tactics of bullying, that's an opportunity for some kid who's not the biggest athlete in the world to think about how, how it works. And so that's the kind of thing that I'm really eager to see take hold with teachers. To, these games are a way of teaching about relationships. It's, first of all, you have to have cooperation to play a game. You don't even get to com competition until you have cooperation. And when cooperation breaks down, the games break down. And so there's just so much in it that seems so rich for teachers who have a bunch of stuff that they don't know what to do with. That's teachers, the problem with teachers is figuring out something fun for the kids to do. It just makes sense that if you can build it around play. And I mean, I'm not urging this as curricular stuff. I think to try and break into the curriculum formally is like a murder. It's like you get it from ministries and committees. But extracurricular, there's already a track record for the chess club and uh, this club and that club. And it's just nobody's ever taken an and kind of really study how the learning goes, which is, I'm just so excited to be working with these people at MIT that are really studying how you learn to play games. And so, for example, we play last night. Their first rule is you start right off participating. No big introduction, no reading the rules. Give them 10 chips, set it up, and play. All right? And that, it's, suddenly you're in. That's the idea. So I, I just think there's such an overlap between the idea of education and play. It just seems like a no brainer It's where the kids are. And where, so my, my thought is help teachers lead kids in playing games as a strategy. And do it with the best internet rap that one can put on. <laughs>